So Marnie, thank you so much for joining us here at Penn State. It's a pleasure to welcome you thank back, you. I should say, yeah. 1992. That's right. Penn State grad. Yep. Terrific. So um, really appreciate your being with us today and sharing with us your expertise. And as I've shared, we do this COIL Perspectives, which is a series of questions that we ask experts in the field. And um, this year's set of questions revolves around student learning. So our center is about helping to discover and create new uh, innovations based on online technologies that can help students learn better. Mm -hmm. And we got to thinking about, well, what are the issues? What are the problems? And so I'd, I'd like to have a series of questions with you around the topics of what would you see as a barrier to student learning? Uh, and then we'll migrate into a question around if you had all the resources you wanted and needed, what might you create? What kind of a system might you create? And then the third question is, okay, you might not have all the resources you want, but uh, what's a first step that we might be able to take? So if you wouldn't mind, I, I know you've, you've been an instructor, you've been faculty member, you've been an administrator, so you have real teaching experience, and you've worked with a lot of faculty. What, what might you hone in on as an issue for inhibitors to student learning? So I, th I think I would start at the very beginning. I think a lot of students who, whether they're undergraduates or they're graduate students or they're continuing professional students, um, start their programs without really having very many windows into the outcomes that they're shooting for. Mm. Um, it's hard for them to set real goals because they don't really know what the goals are. Um, in terms of the applications of what they're studying, they may only have a very rough understanding of it based on their experience to date. So I think one of the problems is windows and um, making sure that as early as possible, even before a student starts uh, a new program, that they understand where they're heading um, and they're helped um, at the beginning of the process, not just at the end, to start creating a pathway to, to goals that are meaningful for, for them. Because I think it is, it is that meaning that motivates students to engage. So by windows, you're, you're talking about the information that they need to understand both the short-term goals and the long-term goals so that they can be making informed decisions along that path. That's right. Or if, if, my, if, if I'm giving windows at the beginning to, let's say my interest is in the health professions or the biomedical sciences, and I'm interested in that because my parents have told me, you should be a doctor. We need a doctor in the family. Or you should be a nurse. You're, all of your, your aunts and uncles are nurses or wh whatever the motivation was to begin with. Um, they're not aware of the wide, what that actually means to be a doctor, to be a nurse, mm. nor are they aware of the wide range of, of opportunities between doctor and nurse that are out there as careers in the health professions or as a health professions researcher or biomedical researcher. They just don't know. They have very generalized mm. concepts. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. And they certainly don't know how any of that relates to the general chemistry course that they have to get through in their Good first point. term or their organic chemistry course or physics or there's no context. Mm. And so I think, uh, you know, what is motivating for students is I am taking general chemistry because it's helping me get to this goal and I understand how it's helping me get to this goal. Um, whether that is to be a researcher or whether that is to be a doctor or maybe in the context of that course or intro to bio or any of these courses that students meet when they first get to us, it is almost a responsibility of that experience or the experiences around it to say, this is why, this is why you're here. You're not jumping over a hurdle just because everybody else did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an important step to the next step to the next step that's taking you to this amazing life that you're going to have beyond school. So now I'm, I'm leading into my second question because as you're talking, I'm thinking, well, what would that look like? So if you, if you had all the resources you needed, what would a system look like or a set of services? So um, I think that in the work that we're doing at the UT system, we have been trying to tackle this head on because we do feel that with all students, and particularly those students who are first in family to go to school or who have a lot of um, um, co competition on their, on their time, um, they have to work full time when they're going to school, 
um, th th they have limited windows. And generally speaking, in most educational programs, it's only until you get to the end of the program that sort of the career services start and the advising and mentoring around um, what's next happens. And so instead, we uh, think that a solution would to be to build that, that same kind of career services help into the beginning of the ah, process. Brilliant, sure. So that when you're setting goals, choosing majors, thinking about courses, uh, that you are doing that with eyes wide open, or at least more open sure, sure. than most, for example, freshmen are now when they're coming in with, when they're 18, um, and helping them to create that map and a meaningful map toward, toward those goals. Obviously, those, those goals are going to change. As they get into this map, they're going to realize, oh, this isn't as thrilling as I thought it was going to be, or I'm stronger or more interested in this other thing. But that other thing is also part of a map. And what, what, where are they heading with that? Sure. And what are the opportunities that lie the ahead if they, they change that direction? So that's something that we are working on very explicitly in both services, how we drive the curriculum, and in the technology that supports the experience as well. So you're, um, the idea is that you're going to be opening windows of information and of learning earlier in their decision-making process the hope being that they're going to be do a better job in that they're going to choose the right path because they have the information. Then while they're on that path, they're going to know what's ahead of them all the time through that, that service. That's correct. That's and hopefully, you know, this won't always be the case, but hopefully they won't be walking into classes that really are critical path and thinking, why am I in this class? Yeah. What does this have to do with my future? Yeah. Um, that those links are when possible, made explicit for them. Yeah. So um, that, that's the system you're sort of building and, and uh, mapping out. So in a way, you are, you're, you are addressing that. I'm wondering if you can give us an idea of what maybe the first step was in that process. So was there a piece of that window opening exercise that you sort of honed in on early on? Yeah, so I think that the, tr honestly, the biggest piece of it was, uh, is, was a curriculum mapping exercise where we worked with faculty to really identify those outcomes. So if you are in a biomedical science degree or if you are in an engineering degree or business degree, what are those outcomes in terms of employment or research or academic opportunities? And what are the competencies associated with those outcomes? And how do those competencies map back to the courses that they're going to be taking along the way? And then really defining and designing that map, literally designing it, so that when students are moving through courses, they can actually see their progress uh, along these pathways. And um, so that took a lot of work, obviously. Um, that's not easy, and, um, and in, in, many, in many cases we're making guesses because the work had not been done before. We're creating hypotheses. Yeah. Um, and uh, so very interesting work, but very important work as a first step um, in being able to do this. And then, of course, once you do that, being able to talk to students as soon as they're interested in the program. This is what this program is all about. And these are the outcomes um, of this program in terms of employment opportunities or academic that are going to be yours sure, sure. as you get through this. And this is how we're going to help you along the way. Uh, yeah, I think the idea that curriculum alignment, and I'm wondering why don't we do this as a rule of thumb in all of our educational programming. It's, it, it takes time, it takes energy, and, and it takes planning. Yeah, and it, it, takes, it takes collaboration and agreement also. Yeah. Because a lot of these courses and trajectories, they aren't, they were not industry driven by design or opportunity driven by design. They're just the way things are. They're degree requirements. And um, so to try to retro engineer that, um, to make sure that as students are going through degree requirements, that they understand why, um, it is a lot of work and it, it takes a lot of people to come together and agree. And um, so it takes, because of that, it's, it takes time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrific. 
Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your insights. Uh, we'll be watching for your progress. I know there'll be great things, great stories coming out of your institution and out of your work. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you.